What's going on guys? Hit pause here with a tutorial on how to use the environment query system within Unreal Engine 4 and um, it's gonna be kind of uh, involved and it's a little weird and not really scary but kind of um, it's uh, it's hard to explain it's it's I couldn't figure out like I knew what the system did but I couldn't figure out how to use it so I finally figured that out uh, I don't remember everything cause it's been a little while since I've done it but I'm gonna do my best I've got a bunch of notes here uh, I've got a bunch of images um, here on stuff like how uh, that's not the right set of images uh, on how everything was set up here um, so hopefully this goes well uh, with this tutorial so bear with me I'm gonna try to keep the parts semi short I know that I always say that and I always end up running them like an hour long but I get into the flow into the groove so uh, you can see here that I'm starting with the lock on tutorial um, project map here which is just a third person template so I'm basically going to get rid of uh, do, 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 yes get rid of them let's go and clear that out of my let's get rid of that that was what was destroying him so uh, I'm basically the idea is I want to get an AI character that n runs away from me and knows where to hide um, and so the first thing I'm going to need are some obstacles for him to hide behind so let's get a cube and let's just go ahead and make them kinda like that probably don't need to be as tall and we'll get a few of them kinda scattered around here and we'll see if uh, we can't get this guy running away and hiding from us and that's kinda the point of the uh, the EQS qu uh, query thing is that it it should know uh, where you can and can't see and things like that. Um, an example of this would be something like uh, like if you've played a lot of Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, if you notice uh, the special infected, uh, like the boomers in especially, uh, whenever, once you see him or you've shot at him, uh, he runs away and knows basically exactly where to hide. He will hide around the nearest corner uh, and he knows where that is. And I've always wondered how in the hell they did that. Um, but uh, this should officially handle that kind of thing so let's uh, do this okay I do need a navigation volume here so we'll do a nav volume and let's go ahead and make that be large it should be building the navigation if I hit P here it says it's building the navigation but I don't see it yet um, I should end up with a recast nav mesh thing here uh, let's see let's make sure enable drawing is on uh, sometimes oh, interesting I think it's maybe a little low why did it it only drew right there Uh, what do I have selected here? Nav. Okay, I gotta do the nav mesh volume. Let's pull that up. Building navigation. That's really weird. Because that should be in range to do this. I may need to reopen the map. So let me save all and open level example map. Let's see if that fixes it. I hit P here there we go so sometimes that happens uh, it's kind of weird but so now I got a nav mesh so now I can get this stuff done so what I'm gonna do first is basically give myself uh, an AI controller here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a completely new folder and I'm gonna call this AI runaway okay and I'm pretty much gonna keep everything in here um, so I'm gonna make a new blueprint Okay, and this is going to be based off of AI controller here. Okay, so I'm going to call this AIC Runaway. Okay, so it's AI controller Runaway. And when I come in here, let's start popping stuff up here. Uh, we're looking at a pretty much a blank graph. Now, if I 
reference here. Uh, this is what we're going to build. Okay, we need to make a behavior tree. We need a blackboard. Okay, and then we need to set a key on the behavior tree in Blackboard. So we do need a behavior tree and a Blackboard. So let's make a new miscellaneous behavior tree. Okay, and we will call this BT Runaway. Okay, for behavior tree runaway. And when we come over here, we also need a Blackboard because you can see we can't click over here yet. So we need to make one. So miscellaneous, we'll make a blackboard, and we'll call this BB Runaway for blackboard runaway. Okay. Uh, one thing I don't like, I wish it would get fixed, is if um, we actually need to associate the blackboard here. So we're going to associate that, and now I can switch back and forth here. But if I pick this, you can't switch back and forth. Uh, I've always found that to be a little strange. I guess because the behavior tree is associated to the uh, blackboard, but the blackboard itself is not associated to the behavior tree. You see, I cannot click that. Okay, but if I come over here and I go to the the behavior tree itself, I can swap back and forth. Okay, so we need basically three keys on here. Uh, the three keys that we need are number one, we need a vector, and this vector is going to be move to point. Okay, we need another key. This is going to be object and this is going to be self actor okay so we get a reference to ourself and we want to make sure that that key type here is actually set to actor okay and we need another key here which will be a boolean that's going to say can see player so we know whether or not we can see him okay and our behavior tree let me just look at minutes here that should be enough to get us going right now just to get this started so what we want to do here is basically on the event graph so we're gonna do on begin play uh, not being play event begin play okay we'll zoom in here uh, we're gonna say use blackboard okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the only blackboard we have uh, we might actually need to run the uh, behavior tree first I believe Okay, and we pick the only behavior tree we have. If you have a bunch of characters and whatnot, you'd uh, you'd go from there. So now it knows which uh, behavior tree to run. It also knows which Blackboard to run. Let's just double check that really quick. Okay, self, self. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to set the C's player key, and we want to set that to true in the beginning, just so he basically trips, tr triggers himself in the beginning. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go set value uh, actually we need to get the is it get behavior tree or get blackboard it's get blackboard okay and now we can set value here as boolean okay and what we're gonna do is we wanna tell that blackboard we wanna set the variable in that blackboard to be um, basically uh, the right key so we're gonna make a literal name here so we just type literal and what we're gonna do is type in can see player and we're gonna set that to true okay uh, the target here I believe can be self I believe that can be self and it should be just fine again I'm gonna constantly be looking at the notes hopefully you guys don't hate me for doing that be think I'm less smart I just don't want to screw it up uh, and fumble around with a bunch of uh, uh, like node typos I guess that would, that would be a way to uh, describe that let's go ahead and save all real quick okay so we are uh, we have a blackboard we have a behavior tree and we've told our AI controller to actually use it okay now what we want to do is create a actual class okay an actual character so we're gonna do uh, blueprint here and I think we can type my character okay that's gonna be the parent class it's gonna be my character okay and this is going to be uh, he's gonna run away from us I kinda wanna call him like a pussy but that would be silly that's immature so we'll just call this runaway care like that and we wanna associate the correct AI controller here and I found that the fastest way to do that is to just collapse everything and go right here to AI. Okay, and we're going to call AIC Runaway. We're going to compile and we're going to save that. So now this character, we delete this guy, 
this character is actually using that AI controller. Okay, so whatever I tell that controller to do will will happen on on him. All right. So we got our AI controller. We got our behavior tree. Okay. Now what we need to do. Let's go ahead and save all just just in case. Is in order to use this, you actually need I think go to editor preferences under experimental here. The very last thing is environment querying system. Now this is experimental. I am in 461. Okay, I don't know if it's still experimental in 47, but it is experimental in 46. So we need to check that off. Set that as default. Okay, and we hit OK. You need to make sure you activate that or you can't use the system. Now under miscellaneous, we have environment query. Okay, so we are going to add an environment query and we'll just call it the environment query. We'll just leave it at that. You probably want to name that. When we come in here we get this root here and it basically is completely empty and when you right click you only have four things here that you can uh, assign. So what we're actually going to create is a pathing grid. Okay, And we haven't told it to use it or anything like that. We don't know what's going on. So what I'm going to do here is I want to check of about 800. Uh, the density, uh, I'll, I'll try to explain the environment grid, it basically creates a, uh, a grid of points around, around a, uh, an object, any object that you want, and scores values based on distance, whether it can see it, uh, and things like that, or it can filter these points out, and then you can use that data to drive where the character moves to, or aims, or shoots, or whatever, um, and one of the things that's in here is density, which is right here, which you would think the lower the value, the less dense, but that is actually quite the opposite. Okay, a very low value gives you like a blanket of points. Just imagine these grid points here. A, a density of one would be ev a point on every grid. A density of 200 would be a point every 200 grid spaces, or something like that. Okay, just kind of. I, I would prefer this to be called spacing. Uh, we are going to generate around our querier. Our trace type is actually going to be against navigation because we want them to use the nav mesh. And for the filter, we're going to use a recast filter. Whether or not this actually takes into effect right now, I can't tell you that. So we're just going to save that for now. Okay, and now let's see what we got to do next. We got the blackboard. Okay, now on that, um, on our behavior tree, I believe that one of the things we can do is first we need a sequence. Okay just we want to be able to choose what's going on here I think task yes now as soon as you activated that stuff you should be able to have run EQS query okay and what happens is when this query gets ran uh, once we start adding stuff to it right click to add tests okay so add a test do we want to do distance pathfinding trace uh, and things like that uh, we're actually gonna run a, basically a trace first um, what it'll do is it will score based on some data here okay uh, it's gonna trace against visibility it's gonna do a line check and then what's gonna happen here is it's gonna do some scoring and what it'll do is it will set when you go to your actual black when you go to your behavior tree this is what it sets right here okay um, this is this is basically what it scores. So whatever is the the one that comes out like as the highest score, will it will set this value. Okay? So the that's that's how you, this is this is basically how you use it. Okay? So once you once you stick it in your behavior tree, it comes here and gives you this right here. Now let me um let me see, did I actually, yes, I saved this. Okay, so here's here's what we're going to end up with in the final result, okay? So we got the root, we got a sequence, we do a service to check, and now this check is going to, I'll show you guys how we made it. It's going to check to whether or not we can see the player, so it's going to do a distance, then a trace, okay? Then it's going gonna, it's gonna to run this query as long as uh, we can see the player, okay? Um, if we can see the player and we have a point to move to, we're going to move to it, uh, if we can't see the player, we're just going to wait around. Okay, so that's the theory. And like I said, I'm going to try to keep these videos as short as possible. Uh, we can add like a decorator here for the blackboard just to check. Move to point is set. And actually, we want to see if uh, can see player is set. Now, is that? 
parent. None of these have parent. Why is a can't see player. There we go. It just didn't refresh. So that's basically what I want to check against. And like I said, I want to keep the video short, so I'm going to end this one here. Um, this is ba the basic setup. We officially have... It's not doing anything yet, okay? Um, I don't even know if when we stick this thing out... Yeah, you can't actually place this out like that. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll try to figure... I can't remember how you can actually visualize the whole thing. Uh, I know that was shown in one of the um, Unreal Twitch streams uh, showing how that was done. But um, this is, you know, we have the basic setup now. We need one or two more things uh, to get this going, but uh, for the most part, that's pretty much it. You want to make sure you have an environment query uh, here, okay? Uh, wh however many checks or whatever you end up with. You need to make sure you have a character. You need to make sure you have an AI controller. Uh, you need to make sure that the character is using that controller. And you need the behavior tree and the blackboard to go with it. Okay, so these are the bare minimums, and we're going to need a couple of two two other things here. We're basically going to need to uh, make uh, query context, which are basically placeholders for what object are we going to use to run this query against. So I'm going to end this part here, and when we come back, we will continue. Thanks for watching.